How you doing guys, welcome to another video. This is topic one, volume seven, mass, mass stoichiometry. And this is one of the most important concepts that you'll have to do in semester one of the first year of the diploma program. So make sure you're switched on, ready to go. Let's get into it. So topic one, volume seven, mass to mass stoichiometry. In this episode, we look at how to use the molar ratios and we need to know how to find the amount of an unknown. The IB understandings, they don't really exist for this specific video, but the main thing is we need to be able to solve problems relating to masses in terms of stoichiometry, which we'll talk about now. So let's consider the following chemical equation. We've got two H2 gas plus O2 gas goes to two H2O. Now for chemists, this means that two moles of hydrogen gas reacts with one mole of oxygen gas to form two moles of water. In general terms, we always need half the amount of oxygen as we do to the amount of hydrogen. So that means the coefficients in a balanced chemical equation give us the ratio of the amounts in mole of the reactants and products. And we use this mole ratio to calculate the amounts or the masses of reactants and products. And that mole ratio and an understanding of the mole ratio is extremely important. The best way to do this is via examples. So here's an example. Iron rusts slowly when exposed to air and water. The reaction involved in rusting can be represented by the equation below. What mass of iron oxide is produced when 120 grams reacts completely in air? I've highlighted the thing they want us to find, the iron oxide, so the Fe2O3. That's the thing we want to find the mass of. I've highlighted in yellow the thing that they've given us. They've told us that we have 120 grams of iron. X grams of iron oxide because that's the thing we want to find. So the process. We start off by finding the number of moles of the thing that we know. And we know that the mass of iron is 120, so we can find the number of moles. So using the formula mass over molar mass, we have 120 over the molar mass of iron, 55.85, which gives us the number of moles of iron. Now, to work out the number of moles of Fe2O3. That's the thing that we need to work out the mass. Now, how do we do that? This is where we use the mole ratio. So to work out the number of moles of Fe2O3, we apply this general saying. The number of moles of the thing that you want, the coefficient, so that's two, divided by the coefficient of the thing that you've got, or the thing that you've been given, which in this case is four. So our ratio, the thing that you want, two, iron oxide, over four, the thing that you've been given, and then we multiply that by the number of moles of the thing that we know. And in this case, we know the number of moles of iron. That's what we were able to work out in the first part of the question. So we have two over four, which is a half, times 2.15, which will give us 1.07 moles. So we have 1.07 moles of iron oxide in this formula. So to work out the mass, the mass of Fe2O3, we need to use the formula number of moles times mole mass. So N uh, mass equals mole times mole mass. We've got the number of moles, 1.07, after we use the ratio. We multiply that by the molar mass of Fe2O3, 159.7, and now we've worked out the mass of iron oxide, 172 grams. Just make sure that in a question, they could give you masses in different units. The SI unit for mass is grams for chemistry, so we need to make sure that we convert it to grams so we use the formula. To quickly review, find the number of moles of the thing that you've been given, Use the saying, thing that you want over thing that you've got to find the number of moles of the unknown. Second example, a phosphorus manufacturer is to extract one tonne of phosphorus per day by the process given below. Calculate the mass required of calcium phosphate. 
So calcium phosphate, Ca2PO43, and that's the thing that we need to find. We've been told that we have one tonne of phosphorus to play with. So we can write that in 1.0 tonnes, and X is our calcium phosphate. So we need to convert one tonne into grams. So that means we have one times 10 to the six grams. One tonne is a million grams. So you must do the conversion, whether it be tonnes or kilograms, you must convert to grams. And then the process is the same. We start by finding the number of moles of the thing that we've been given. So we've been given the mass of phosphorus. So we have one times 10 to the six divided by the molar mass of phosphorus, which in this case is P4. So the molar mass is 123.9. We do that calculation and then we were able to work out the number of moles of phosphorus. Now this is gonna be a large number. A ton is a large amount of chemicals. Now to find the number of moles of calcium phosphate, we're going to set up the ratio. The thing that you want, its coefficient, which is two. Over the thing that you know, or the thing that you've been given, in this case, one, because there's a one out the front of the phosphorus, multiplied by the number of moles of the thing that you know. And we know the number of moles of phosphorus. So we have two times 8.07 times 10 to the three, which is 1.61, times 10 to the four moles. Three significant figures all the way through this question. Now we're in a position after we've got the number of moles to find the mass. The mass of calcium phosphate will be the number of moles multiplied by the molar mass and that's gonna give us our mass. So our number of moles of calcium phosphate after using our ratio 1.61 by 10 to the four multiplied by the molar mass of calcium phosphate, one that you've got to get right, 310.18, be careful with that, gives us 5.00 times 10 to the six grams. Now that is approximately five tons. So we need five tons of calcium phosphate to get out one mole of phosphorus. To quickly review, we need to find the number of moles of the thing that we've been given information about, Use the ratio, thing that you want, over thing that you've got, and then work out the mass. Okay, another example. Octane, C8H18, main component of petrol. It burns in oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. In the other examples, you'd been given the equation, so you would assume that it's balanced. For this equation, you need to balance it up. So we have our octane plus our oxygen, that forms carbon dioxide and water, and then we need to balance this. So remember the little saying, CHOD, balance for carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and then D standing for double. So balance for carbon, I put in eight CO2s, and then to balance for hydrogen, I need to put in nine. Oh, that gives me that problem that I have an odd number of O's, so I take that odd number, stick it in front of the 25, and then I double everything else. So I have a two out the front of the octane, I double the carbon dioxide to 16, and I double the water to 18. There it is, balanced. Then the question says, calculate the mass of oxygen required to react with 200 grams of octane. So the thing that we want is the mass of oxygen, which I've done in green. The thing that we've been given is the amount of octane, 200 grams. So the procedure remains the same. We calculate the number of moles of the thing that we've been given, in this case the octane, mass over molar mass. We must make sure we get those formulas right. So we have 200 divided by the molar mass of octane, 114.26, which gives us 1.75 moles. That's how many moles of octane. Now we use the ratio to find the number of moles of the thing that we want. The ratio Thing that we want, 25 over the thing that we've got, two. So the ratio is 25 over two times the number of moles of the thing that we know, which is octane. So we have 25 over two times 1.75, which will give us our number of moles of oxygen. The working out is so important in these questions. That gives us 21.9 moles. 
Now I'm in a position to find the mass of oxygen by multiplying by the molar mass. So the mass equals mole times molar mass, which equals 21.9 times 32, which gives me my mass of oxygen. 700 grams. For part C, calculate the mass of carbon dioxide produced. So for this one, we're going to work out carbon dioxide, so we simply need to use the ratio again. Now we're going to start with the thing that they gave us. We're not going to make up a new ratio. We're going to use the number of moles of octane because that's the thing that was given in the question. And then we're going to use the ratio between carbon dioxide and octane to work out our number of moles. So the thing that we want now is carbon dioxide, 16. The thing that we've got, octane, so it's a 16 over 2 times the number of moles of the thing that we know, which is octane. So you have the 16 over 2 multiplied by 1.75, which gives us 14.0 moles. And now I'm in a position to find the mass. Mass of carbon dioxide equals mole times molar mass. The molar mass of carbon dioxide is 14 times 44.01. And my mass of carbon dioxide is 616 grams. So topic one, volume seven, some top tips. Make sure you use the same, the thing that you want over the thing that you've got, multiplied by the thing that you know, show you're working clearly, and it really does take practice. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new, and if you need to watch this one a couple of times, you've just gotta do it.